a lot of people don't lay their cards out in this, in this format with the, the fronts and the backs opposite each other with a common fold line between them. So often, unfortunately, you'll have to lay out your own cards. So you'll start with a template like this in your graphics program of choice, and you'll need to take the, the original file, which will often be laid out in a, a 3 by 3 grid, and copy the individual cards into this template and align them correctly. And now I'll show you how to do that using some readily available free software. To do this, we're going to use a piece of software called Inkscape. And Inkscape is a piece of free open source software that you can get from inkscape.org. Now, as you can see, it's a professional vector graphics editor. It's cross-platform. It's for Windows, OS X, and Linux. And it is free and open source, which means you don't have to pay any money at all to use it. If you open the, the download link here, you'll be able to find a download for your particular platform. I'm on Windows, so I'm using that. And simply click on one of these links to download the software. Once you have Inkscape installed, you'll find that you can now open these SVG files, Scalable Vector Graphics. And there are two templates, one for A4 sized paper and one for US letter sized paper. I am in UK, so I'm going to use the A4 template. And as this opens in Inkscape, you'll see that it is a, a template file for four cards, fronts and backs. There's the common fold line down the center. So this is just the format that we need to lay out our cards for nice printing. So there's a few things that it's useful to know in Inkscape. First of all, if you want to move around, then hold down the space bar, and you'll see that you now just move your mouse, and you can pan around the page. Secondly, if you want to zoom in and out, there's this little box down in the right hand corner and you can use that to zoom in and out. There's also a magnifying glass. If you want to zoom in on a specific section you can drag a box around that particular section or you can hold down the shift key to turn it into a zoom out. Click to zoom in, hold down shift and click to zoom out. So that's your basic moving around and looking at things controls. If you want to pick and select things then you need this arrow tool at the top here, which is just the, the standard click to select. And if you want to turn on and off layers, which are a, a feature of Inkscape that allows you to make sure that some elements of your document are in front of or behind others, then you'll need to use the layers palette. Now, by default, this is up in the top right. If you don't have it visible, you need to go into the layer menu here and choose layers at the bottom and that will show the the layer palette on the right hand side of the screen there you can drag it taller or shorter as you prefer and this allows us to turn on and off individual parts of the document so if we want to turn off the cut and fold marks here we can click the little picture of an eye next to that it turns into a closed eye and the crop marks have gone. Turn off the artwork position guides and turn those back on again by clicking them another time. If you want to prevent a certain part of the document from being selected then you can click this little padlock. At the moment they're all open padlocks which means you can do what you like. If you click it until it's a closed padlock that layer is now locked and we can no longer do anything with the elements on that layer. Lastly we're going to use a feature called uh, snapping which is going to be really useful for lining cards up with these rectangles in a template. So again, if you don't have the snapping palette, which is these controls down the right hand side, the far right hand side of the window, if you don't have that visible, then you'll need to go into the view menu and find show and hide and make sure the snap controls bar is ticked. So if I turn that off, you'll see it's hidden. And again, view, show hide, snap controls, and it comes back. Now, in order to lay out our cards, first we're going to need card graphics. And we can open these also in Inkscape, which will allow us to copy and paste the individual cards into our layout. So, for our first example, I'm going to open up the print and play files for a game called Oddball Aeronauts, which was on Kickstarter a few years ago, and backers had access to the print and play files. So, when you open a PDF, which is how a lot of print and play files are distributed, 
you will need to select a specific page to open. So for example, this first page looks like it's all card backs, so we'll skip that one. Move up to page two, and these are definitely card fronts. So we'll open this page. This is open in a new Inkscape window. If we open this out and zoom in a bit, we'll see here is our document with all of our card fronts. And if you're lucky, then your PNP file will be constructed of separate objects like these ones. So you can select individual cards by clicking on them with the, the select tool and move them around individually, which is great. In this case, all we need to do is select one of these cards, copy it, go back into our template file, select the artwork layer, because we want to have all of our artwork above all of the other items in the document, paste that card, and then we need to line it up with one of these rectangles in our template. So if you just drag the artwork into position, you'll find that it can be a little bit tricky to line that artwork up. However, if we turn on snapping, now first of all, you need to make sure this top button here, enable snapping, is turned on, meaning it looks like it's been pressed in. So that's off, that's on. Next, we need to choose this second one down, snap bounding boxes. And what that means is that this rectangle all the way around the outside of our card here is going to snap into position over the bounding box of this rectangle. And that's what we want. And lastly, we also want to turn on this, this fourth one here, which is the snap bounding box corners, because that's the easiest part to line up. So once those three buttons are on, we should now be able to drag our card into position and it will neatly tell us it snapped the bounding box corner into place. Now, hopefully, the card will line up and fill the entire area of that position rectangle, but if we zoom in here, you'll often find that some cards aren't exactly the right size. However, since it's a small discrepancy, you can nearly always resize the card itself to properly fit your template. So, when you have an item selected in Inkscape, you have these little arrows around the outside, and when you hover over them, they light up and these are your scaling arrows. So if we click on the one at the bottom right here, we know our top left corner is, is aligned perfectly already because we snapped it into position. So we just need to drag our bottom right until that also snaps into position there with that little tooltip there and let go. You could drag this to more or less any size, obviously. But we're just going for the bottom right hand corner filling the, to the bottom right of our position rectangle. And then if we zoom out again, we can move on to the next cards. If we have a look in our source document, we'll see actually these, these first three cards are identical. So there's no reason to keep going back and forth to our document and pick out each one in turn. We can simply take this, copy, paste, line that up. And because we've already scaled it perfectly, it doesn't matter which corner we line up. And then we can paste another one, line it up. And there's our first three cards. Now we can go back to the uh, the source document, pick the next card. I find it useful to move them out of position when I've copied them, because that means that I can keep track of which cards I've already taken. Paste that in, and again we just need to line it up and scale in the bottom right hand corner. Okay, so there's our card faces, so we also need to make sure we've got all of our backs in place. This document is just the fronts, so we'll need to also open the same PDF but this time select the first page which has all the card backs on. And yet again our card backs are conveniently individual images so we can simply copy those and paste them into our template. I'll line that up in the top right, left hand corner, scale it to the bottom right hand corner. Now at this point We've got our card back in place, but remember, the page is going to be folded along this line. So this card, if we fold it over, is actually going to be upside down. So we need to rotate this round 180 degrees, so that it's actually the right way up, once we've folded the back underneath the front. Clicking an item once to select gives us these scaling handles. If we click it a second time once it's selected, they change into rotation handles. So we can now grab any corner and drag it, and it will start to rotate. Again, it's not necessarily that easy to get it perfectly rotated, so if you hold down control 
it will rotate in discrete increments and you'll find it much easier to line it up perfectly to 180 degrees and then of course we can copy that and paste it four times or three more times to fill out all of the backs for these cards. So we have our fronts laid out and our backs laid out however the problem is that if we fold these over and cut them out if there is any slight misalignment from one card to the next then you will see some of this grey or some of this yellow around the edges of your card which isn't great and we're putting in a lot of effort to make as nice a card as possible so we don't want to have those little slivers of, of grey or yellow showing up. So that's where this bottom layer comes in. If I turn it off and on again you'll see which layer it is. It's those rectangles of colour behind each card. If we select those and fill them with a colour which matches the border colour of our cards then we'll have essentially a bleed. We'll have a, a colour that stretches all the way around the outside of our cards to make sure that wherever we cut it will still have the right colour on the other side of the card. We need to select one of these colours and if you can click directly on it then you will select it. However if you're having trouble with this we can remember lock all of the other layers to make sure that the only layer we can possibly select objects on is this background colour fill layer which makes it much easier to pick the right one. So now we just need to make sure that that is filled in the same colour as this border which we can do by zooming in so that we can definitely see the border properly and using the eyedropper tool. What this will do is allow us to pick a colour from our image and transfer that onto our currently selected object. So I click there and now the rectangle behind is filled in with the colour I picked. If I picked over here it would be filled in with orange or beige or this kind of slate colour but I click on the border and it's filled in with the same colour as the border. So again we'll select this yellow use the eyedropper to fill it in the same beige just line up that crosshair at the end of the eyedropper with the colour you want. So what to do about this rectangular border here? Well essentially we just need to cover it up with beige so if we select this tool here this is a create rectangles tool and essentially if I click and drag then I will create a new rectangle in my document in between the the start and the end of my drag so if I drag like this I've created a big rectangle and I'm on the background color layer at the moment so it's underneath all of my card art and underneath the crop marks so what we need to do is we need to go up to our artwork layer remember that you'll have to unlock your artwork layer by clicking the little padlock because we previously locked it to make sure we didn't accidentally select the artwork when we were trying to select the colored backgrounds we can lock our colored backgrounds layer and now we can only ever affect the artwork layer so you should now be able to click and drag a rectangle that there you go, there's a big beige rectangle but we're just covering up that top border of all of those cards and again we can do a bit down here cover up that side border cover up two of these at the same time what you have to be careful with here obviously is not to if you go all the way then you've covered up your crop marks and you need those crop marks to cut the cards out later so you need to make sure you leave those in place at least enough to see them you should still be able to easily cover up all of the borders around these cards and you'll often have to do this it's not just the case that this particular deck of cards has these borders you will often find that print and play cards have these slight borders around because they're left in to help people cut them with scissors but now we have our fronts and our backs laid out we've got the borders eliminated and if we print this out with the little printer icon up here that will send it to whatever your printer is. If we print this out we will have a sheet of cards ready to be varnished, folded, spray glued and wrapped around a cardstock core cut out into really nice playing cards. So what do we do if our print and play cards are not in such a convenient file format as the Oddball Aeronauts ones where each card is an individual image inside a PDF? So for example I've got these cards from Battlecon which are part of their free print and play sample and they're just an image this is a, a JPEG and we've got nine cards here laid out in a 3x3 grid and they're very nice cards and it's definitely worth doing a nice job of printing them out but how do we start? well thankfully if we open up Inkscape Inkscape can still open JPEG files so we'll open up one of those sets of fronts and we'll open up our template as well because obviously we'll need somewhere to put them 
And there's a very useful feature in Inkscape for this kind of thing called guides. And essentially a guide is a, a new line that you can position over the top of your document using these rulers, which will allow you to snap to it in much the same way as we were snapping the cards into the, the position rectangles on the template. So if we zoom in a bit more, to set up a guide, you need to move your mouse over the rulers down the side of the page here. And if you don't already have the rulers turned on, you need to go into the View menu, Show and Hide, and make sure the rulers is checked here. So if I turn those off again, you'll see they disappear. Back into Show and Hide rulers, and they've appeared again. What you'll need to do is click on the ruler itself to the side of the page, and drag out into the page, and you'll see this red line appears. What you want to do is try and line that red line as closely as you can up to the edge of the cards in your document. So there's the first one. And divide your document up into a number of slices like this. In this kind of case, where you've got a bit of a white line down the middle, just drop the guide right on the white line like that. It doesn't need to be absolutely pixel perfect, because you'll find it very hard, even with such a nice method as we have, to cut your cards absolutely perfectly anyway. And as we saw, just a second ago, we can always go in and cover up these bits of white that will inevitably get into our cards. We can go up to the top ruler and drag down to get a horizontal guide. And we need to box in our card on all four sides with these guides. So now we've got these top three boxed in, I can show you what we need to do. Select this tool again, create rectangles and squares. And we need to create a rectangle that comes and covers exactly the area of one of these cards. So I click up here where it's snapped onto the guide and drag to the bottom right until it snaps onto the other guide down here and let go. This rectangle now covers up one of my cards here perfectly. Now I select this rectangle and I hold down shift and I click to select the image as well. And you can also do this by just dragging across both items but you'll need to be far enough zoomed out that you can drag entirely around both items. So it's easier if you just click, click and select. Now we've got the the rectangle we've just drawn and also the larger image with all of the cards selected at the same time. So you can see there's a, a dashed line around here showing that the card image is selected and there's a dashed line in here showing that the rectangle is selected. If we right click, you'll see down here there's a, a menu item called Set Clip. And what that means, essentially, is it's going to cut out the object behind to match the shape of the object in front. The object behind is our image, and the object in front is our new rectangle we've just drawn. So if we click that, it now clips that entire card image down to just the one card that we had selected. We can now select that, copy it, go into our template, and on our artwork layer, paste it in. And you see we have one card out of our 3x3 three three grid. We can now line up neatly with our template and scale to be perfectly lined up with our template and it's all ready to go. We can just carry on in the same manner. If we need to go back and get another card, rather than closing the document, reopening the document, setting out the guides again, if we right click on this again, we can release clip. All of the other cards come back. So I find it useful to draw a new rectangle each time because like that, again, I can see which cards I've already taken by looking at which ones are covered up by rectangles. So I'll draw another rectangle over this next card along and again, make sure the rectangle is selected, make sure the image is selected, set clip in the right click menu and I've got a single card. Copy that, paste it into my template and there we have another card ready to be snapped into position. Okay, and then just as before, we'll need to select our background color and make that the same color as our borders here because it's inevitable when you cut cards out of an image that you'll have some of this border around each card. And in this case, there's quite a lot of white and we've got these little rounded corners on the, on the corner here. We want to get rid of all of that. Again, we'll just drag another rectangle on our artwork layer again, remember over the top of all of those and cover up those borders. Okay, so I've just done the two cards here, but you can see that this is going to work just as well for laying out these cards into our template. And once we've done all of the fronts and all of the backs, 
we'll have another set of cards that we can easily print out and make a really nice copy of the print and play game with. Lastly, you might find that when you open your cards in Inkscape, and here we'll open the cards from Austerity, you might find that you don't have individual card images that you can drag around, and you don't just have a single large image. You actually have separate parts of the card, separate components, get dragged around at once. So here I've just dragged out the background of three cards at once. I'll undo that. That's not what I meant to do. Uh, how about here? If I drag that... Oh, I'm dragging the text of three cards at once. That's no good either. In this case, the cards have been put together using a vector editing suite, and they are actually just made of lots of little vector components. And some of those are the card background, some of them are the text, some of them are the little icons that you see on the tops of the cards. And you can't really easily select just the bits that you want to place into your layout template. The easiest thing to do in this kind of situation is to select everything, which you can do with Control A, or you can do in the Edit menu with Select All in all layers, just to be on the safe side. Or you can just, using the Select tool, drag a big box around absolutely everything. Once you've got everything selected, right click on it and choose right down the bottom here, Group. And what that means is it treats it as a single object. So Inkscape has said this is now all of those objects are now grouped into a single object so I can select it as a single object and I can move it around as a single object which means that we can now zoom in we can set our guides just the same way as we did with the images because essentially as far as Inkscape is concerned we can treat the image that we had in the previous section and this group of objects in more or less the same way they're both a single thing which we can select and drag around on its own. So I'll set my guides out and I can now create a new rectangle that goes over the top of just one card, select that rectangle and then my group, right click, set clip, just the same as we did with the image and that gives us a single card that we can then copy and paste into our template. And we now have a single item that we can drag around and snap into position just the same way as we could with our images or our separate files out of the PDF. The other thing you might want to bear in mind especially when you're not pasting images over the top but you're actually using a PDF, a vector card you may be able to see the outline of this position rectangle. So these white rectangles have been left in the template to make it easier for you to snap into position your cards but if if you don't want them after you've finished laying out your cards you can open up your layers palette here and find the layer called artwork position guides and just turn that off and you'll see the borders disappear and once we select our background color here and fill it in with one of these colors from our cards. Again you've got more or less the same situation as you had before. Wherever you cut you'll have a, a fairly good edge on your card.